Kelly O'Coin is here on the Rich Eisen Show, the man who plays Dollar Bill on Billions, and he is here in town to shoot shooting the Sterling Affairs. Great to see you, sir. Great to see you, too. We've done this uh, on the phone a we couple have times. now my, in person. My first time in the studio. So great. So I get to do this. Uh, I have to get the, the set ready here. I've got my <laughs> yes. axe There we go. mug. Wait for it. Here we go. Oh, oh you, you got, got my fleece. Ah, oh, nice. And... There we go. Do this for the interview. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it works with what I'm wearing. What do you think? No? Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. No, it goes with... Uh, no, it's 100%. Yeah, it goes with... Uh, my axe cap fleece. What do we got? Oh, thank you. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, Look at that yeah, full yeah. service yeah. guest. Right? You're going to wear my... <laughs> my... <laughs> my uh, <laughs> stuff. We just said... <laughs> just, it's okay. Literally just ask, can I swear? <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we go. Mothers of America. It's all good. Hold on a minute. There we go. What do you think? I got Shark, my axe cap fleece. It's a good when, look. When I wear this in town, <laughs> people look. are like, where the hell did you get that? Oh, How seriously? Get, oh, seriously? Yes. People ask me on, on Twitter and on Instagram constantly where to get it, and I'm kind of like, did you Google? <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, it's, it's on the Showtime. So, yeah, it's like it's, it's actually featured on the Showtime shop, uh, on the website on, for shopping. Well, I got I got these, you know, oh, uh, this is, uh, you can't say it's swag because it's not stuff you all get right <laughs> is that wrong i gotta send you a uh i am not uncertain t-shirt oh, and, and mug we all want uh, them. We yeah. all want all right them. all right we that's all done them. that's done you we got all them. want them yeah. we're a team here maybe called the rich eisen show but we're a team right i almost wore my t-shirt but i decided i'd rip uh yes Dalla. my favorite ball player happens to share my nickname so damian lillard damian lillard Dalla Bill. i love that I love that. He's one of our favorite players, too. Oh, and I know you love talking about the Portland Trailblazers. And yeah. that's so So we've kind of set the agenda. I've got my gear. I've got it all working. Our terrestrial radio audience is about to rejoin us. Back here on the Rich Eisen Show, here on the Rich Eisen Show uh, Terrestrial Radio Network, as long uh, as well as Sirius XM and Odyssey sitting right next to me. I'm all axe capitaled out with my mug and my, <laughs> my axe cap zip up uh, uh, vest. The man who plays Dollar Bill on, uh, on uh, Billions and in town for the Sterling Affairs about Donald Sterling based on the yep. Ramona Shelburne podcast that she's been on to talk about. Kelly O'Coin, great to see you here. Great sir. to see you too. Uh, let's just jump in. You, what do you want to talk about uh, about your, your Blazers? Go for uh, it. Go for my it. Blazers. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I we are about where I thought we would be actually mm -hmm. a little uh, uh, better off than I thought we'd be yes. given that this is the most brutal NBA schedule I have seen in the NBA for a long time. Right. Um, I think that the 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 start, which was very exciting, got people's hopes up a little bit in mm -hmm. Portland. Uh, maybe thought we were further along than we were. Um, but I think, you know, we're two games over 500 uh, given all the new guys we got. Mm -hmm. And overall, um, it's a very young team. Um, and that brutal schedule, I think actually it's, uh, we're in a pretty good position. You're, you're sitting a half game in front of the Warriors, yeah. which I think I would have, yeah. if I gave you a piece of paper, you would have signed that back in October. I would have absolutely taken that. You know, for yeah. sure right now. Yeah. And so are you from Oregon? Is that? Is I am. It? I was born outside of Portland. My family's from the mountains, the Ben Redmond sisters area. Uh, but I had I spent half my life in Washington, DC, like before college, literally evenly split. Mm -hmm. And, um, I may have told you this before, or, uh, but I when I was 10, we had just moved a year before to Washington, D.C., and the Blazers won the championship. And it was kind of like a little bit of Oregon saying, it's going to be okay, kid. And then the next year, the Bullets, my adopted team, yes. East Coast team, won. And I was like, well, 11-year-old me was like, well, this is great. You know, you like a team and they win championships. Fantastic. <laughs> And, and now, never since. Now you're a grizzled man who's <laughs> hollow inside, beaten no, down no. by years of <laughs> no, but near it, misses. It, at least you know. Um, well, not, not at least. Lillard is oh. just such a great player oh, yeah. and person to root for, and the fact that he hasn't done the he hasn't done the trade demand. Yep. I need to. My clock's ticking. Yeah. Like he's he's. Stuck with the program. He's stuck with a change in coaches, change in management. He is stuck with it. Absolutely. And um, you know, I think that when we were when we made it to the Western Conference Finals, I think that probably there was thought on his side. Maybe I'm obviously not in his brain. Yes. That oh, right, we've we've taken that next step, and now it's just a matter of time before we can push through and win uh, and, uh, and get in the finals. Yeah. Uh, and then it didn't go that way. So even with that sort of real that hope plucked away from him, he still remains. Um, steadfast that he wants to stay and build in portland and, is he, you know, is small he, market teams we got to love that sure is he your favorite blazer of all time or are we going way back here you where, where are we, where uh, are I, we? I mean i could name five Go he's definitely top five who are your others brandon roy um maurice lucas terry porter and uh jerome kersey also 
Jerome Kersey. That guy, man. Yeah. And you got to love great. Buck. You got to love Bill Walton. I got Bill Walton on my screensaver because he came to see a play I was in. And I was like, come on, you're not leaving. Yeah, he, I was in San Diego doing a play. And um, the kids <laughs> in the dressing room were like, Bill Walton's out there. And they were all Laker fans because it, uh, mm -hmm. it was in La Jolla. Uh, and I was like, stop effing with me. Um, and he, yeah, I got him. And he, uh, Did he come back? Did he, he, he didn't come back, but I mean, he's doing great now. So I can sort of make this yeah. uh, offhand comment. You know, they were like, He's not moving that fast. You're not going to. Right. He's not going to outrun you. So you, you just get dressed and go out and you'll find him. And I did and uh, took a selfie where my collar's all askew. Because oh. I was just like, I got to get out there before he leaves. <laughs> did he tell you your performance was marvelous? It was, he said it was the greatest <laughs> transcendental, <laughs> transcendent performance of all time. John Wooden once told me, you know, <laughs> I love my life. To take your moments. <laughs> One of my favorite people when I was at ESPN was Dr. Jack Ramsey. Uh -huh. I I mean, one, you want to talk about human beings and just caring, but also giving yeah. and sitting down. And you could ask him any question. Like, I asked him about his, like, his plaid pants and stuff like Did that. You? Yeah, of course. And he, he had a sense of humor he, about he, it? Big time. Oh, big time. That's and great. And so I turned, uh, I had my 30th birthday party in New York City when I was at ESPN back in the day. And I bring this up because it, it happened. I had it in New York City. And... Either uh, a whole bunch of people from ESPN were coming, or they weren't, and it was all depending. <laughs> it was all depending on if the Knicks could extend the NBA Finals at the time against the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, and all you had to do was, was win one more game, and that would that would mean that everyone was still in town for one extra game in New York. The Knicks won it, and so Dr. Jack Ramsey was at my thirtieth birthday oh my party, God. and it was it was one of the great. I just looked around. I'm like, this is. He couldn't have been nicer. I would have died happy if some if, if yeah. Jack Ramsey had been right? at my birthday. That's that's great. I'm that's a great. lucky guy. And wasn't it that was uh, Spreewell in Houston that uh, took over the end of that game and, and won it in a squeaker, right? And they they forced an extra game, so, you, so everyone was there. You owe them. I do. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this I is do. a good memory. Yeah. I do. I do. Uh, Kelly O'Coin here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Let's jump. Let's jump into some of this good stuff here. Let's start with the Sterling affairs. Um, this is based on Ramona Shelburne's podcast right. on. The Sterling, right? Yeah, it was a six-part podcast, which is amazing. If you if you haven't, uh, anyone hasn't mm -hmm. listened to it, it's it's terrific. Uh, and uh, she's great. I've talked with her a number of times about it. She's an executive producer on the show as well. Um, it's going to be on FX. I play Andy Roser, who was the president of uh, basketball operations uh, with the Clippers. Um, and Ed O'Neill, we Ed know, is Donald. Is Sterling. Donald Sterling. Lawrence Fishburne is Doc Rivers. Uh, Jackie Weaver is Shelly Sterling. Uh, it's a great Damn. cast. She's and perp, by the way. Perfect. She looks just like yes. Sterling's wife. Oh it, my God, what a, what a casting gig that it's is. It's a bit of a mind. Uh, for those who might, anyway. she's in Yellowstone right now. She's in Yellowstone <laughs> yeah, right that's now. Right. For she those was who in uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Yes, and, she was. Uh, oh, she's perfect casting. Totally. And when I did, so I was in New York still when the first table reads were happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so I was zooming in and all of a sudden I heard this voice the person doing uh, you know, I was like, I knew Ed O'Neill was playing Donald Sterling, but I heard the voice and I was just like, I thought maybe they were running tape of something to get us started. It mm -hmm. is, it was so dead on perfect. He's so he, of course he, he nails, nails it. He's, he nails. he's Ed O'Neill. And he does his own, th I mean, he's, you know, it's, it's not an impersonation, but it's just, it's it, it yeah it's it's kind of it's a it's a mind f. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I learn I, I learned. appreciate yeah. that. No, and you're again you're you're a diehard NBA fan and oh, a it's... Western Conference hoops fan because you're a Blazers we fan. We were so you watching know this. my wife and I were watching Winning Time, and she reminded me that I turned to her and I was just like I gotta get a basketball show, and two weeks later I got this. Get out of here! So wow. it's the only time I've ever manifested wow. something positive uh, in my life. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you weren't sitting there with your your money manager saying, "I need to I need to get in a show about managing money. You know, I need to do yeah, that." That's right. How do I get into a finance show? How do I get into a finance show? I want my nickname to actually be currency. About somebody with no scruples with whatsoever. No scru um, I, who are you channeling as Dollar Bill Stern? Who are you doing? That? You know, you I uh, I wasn't really channeling anyone. Uh, the character had I was in two scenes in the pilot. I just thought that the the writing was so specific that I knew this guy. And I thought, I realized after I, every time after I film, my jaw hurts. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, there's something I'm doing. You know, he's just aggressive. And my, and my wife always tells me that my, 
legs are about two feet wider when I stand than they normally are. <laughs> so there was just something physical that started to happen. I love that. You know, it was just like, yeah. and um, she's also told me if I bring an ounce of dollar bill home, then I'm out. But uh, <laughs> so noted. She's a wise, she's wise, a wise individual. She's a wise lady, yeah. yeah knows yeah. about relationships, clearly. Yep. yep. And how they uh, work. Well, as we yeah. know, dollar bill has a second family, so. That's true, too. And a girlfriend. Right. <laughs> Sarah Styles. <laughs> right. Brilliant Sarah Styles yeah. playing Bonnie. Um, yeah, he is. And we see much more of her than we ever saw the two wives. Right. Well, you did get to see them each once. <laughs> My wife likes to remind me that she's, you know, she's the first wife. What's, so. your, what's the favorite line that uh, has been written for you that you can you can repeat here? Because, I mean, the way that Koppelman and Levine write this, there's, a, there's for... a certain staccato to, obviously, the show yeah. and the delivery, and the, but the, the similes and the analogies that they come up with to pop culture, they just come out of left field. Yeah. I'm just wondering what, what, what's your favorite line? There's so many. I mean, the, the classic, of course, um, uh, I'm Kaiser Stoze, mother effer, you know. <laughs> and Koppelman told me at lunch one time, uh, or first season, he was like, I just wrote maybe my favorite line ever for you. And that's it? And I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, you'll know it when you see it. And we sat down to the table read, and I said the line, and he was at the far end, and he just looked down, and he was like, ah? Huh? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sold. And then there's another, just in terms of like alliteration, there was one um, where I'm saying, I want I, I I want them to flow like the Kankamanga Rapids or something like that, and mm -hmm. it's just like they know how to get like you said staccato. They, yeah. They, the, the consonants and the it's 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 hard to memorize at first, but then it's impossible to forget. Like it's the the writing is so specific and so um, deliberately yes. done in a specific way. You can't contract if they say cannot. They don't want you to say can't. Mm -hmm. If you if they write can't, you can't say cannot. Like they are so specific with the line. Really. There's no improv. There's no embellishing. There's no, I know how I would say it. They're like, mm, no. Ah, no, you don't. Interesting. Yeah, okay. even after seven years. It makes sense. It did Because they're good at what they do. And anytime I've tried to cut a corner and think they won't notice, they do. And it's always better than what I wanted to do. How about that? Yeah. yeah how great. about, and it just shows like, like billions are, um, or succession. Yeah. Where it's so well written and acted and it's dramatic, but. You're laughing out loud half the time, you know, like <laughs> yeah. laugh out loud. Yeah. Sometimes funny. with those two shows you mentioned, um, it's like just the audacity of these mm -hmm. people. Like I, I, the behavior, and it's fun. I'm so unlike Dollar Bill, but maybe like a 180. <laughs> but it's so much fun to misbehave, you know. You get to like try that that uh -huh. uh, that that little uh, that little fleece vest on and uh and it's all like of your sudden, armor it's like my armor it's, yeah <laughs> and you and dan soder just mafi oh, it's just great. a great it's a great you know um character arc for the both of you yeah. and the fact that i you know they call up they say hey rich we need you in new york are you up for it and i when i got that phone call right. about uh hey we'd love for you to be part of the show can you do it and I, i'm like when is it and they told me, you know, January, and I'm like, just please, it cannot be a playoff weekend for NFL playoff right. weekend. It was yeah. right in the middle of the week, and I, I didn't even tell you guys. No, I took you were off, just like, hey, I'm, I'm like, going to be gone on a Wednesday. I'm like, what? Why? Why? It's the NFL playoff week, which is tough for me to, yeah. to, sure, to, to yeah. take off. Um, so I did it, and they had no idea yeah. that that's what I went to do. I actually kept it a he, secret. It was actually, he did us dirty. I did, and and so did you not know until it aired? No, he told us before, after okay. he, he had filmed Yes, it. Okay. right. But I, there were a bunch of people I didn't tell until it yeah, aired, and yeah. people right. were like freaking like, what the That's, hell? And so I, by the way, they did tell me to ad-lib some of the lines, you okay. know, about oh. calling the action okay. of you and Mephi boxing against each other. Because I was just remembering a couple of these brilliant ones, and actually, so can I, I'm going to, like, three things, sure. and then tell me if they were for, written sure. or ad lib. Sure. Well, uh, there's a patty cake. Oh. And there's a baker's man. Is that you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was it, there there was not. I mean, there were a few lines written to set things up. Sure. But when I'm calling the action, right? I was just doing all of that stuff. That's yeah. not strictly legal. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been written. Okay. That might have been. I think that was written. That's not strictly legal at yeah. all. But the, and what's the third one? Well, you did uh, <laughs> the first you know two, but then it was like that's not strictly legal. And then it, again, not strictly legal. And then later on, it was like okay, that's not legal. It was just like this they, devolution. They, they were saying they, they were tossing me some stuff to say, and then they said one time you do it, and I thought they were going to keep one. My favorite line. I can't curse here because I worked blue. I'm like you know 
when when you and Mafi start leaning on each other and it's the worst <laughs> fight ever. It's so bad if okay. anyone hasn't seen it. It's, it's so the bad. the worst fight ever. And now we're we're uh, instead of me trying to call it like a real match, I am now openly derisive right. about the action that I am now being, you know, I have to lower myself to call. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I said, you know, uh, they're going to make a movie out of this. It's going to be called Raging Bull S. It's what I called. Like, that's going to be Pretty the good. name of it. I thought, I thought for sure yeah. that was in. <laughs> and I was, when I watched it back, I'm like, how did they not? You know, I, I was like, with an honor of, for me to work blue on Billions. Right, right. And then there was a shot I took. I think um, I, I gave it to Mike Hoskins, our, uh, our CP, a shot of you and Mafi and the, and the ref from from the my position while you were just on a break. Right. And this is, this is like one of my favorite... Oh photographs you know there you are oh that is soda's got his arms around you and the ref i don't know what the hell you were talking were your ribs broken by this point i I, he broke my rib on the first take the first take of the first (laughs) thing yeah he was like we we had it we choreographed this and we worked on it for like a month month and a half it was down to a t but then you get in front of like 200 extras the cameras are actually on and adrenaline starts to kick in yeah and it was just a little hard and a little high because I had, you know, we had these um, uh, little flak jacket like things on down yeah. here, a little hard. And he didn't do that. He pulled, he pushed through. Um, Damn. And I felt a kachink. And I was like, oh, that's, not, that's not good. That's not what that's you're not supposed to feel like. That's um, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and uh, and then I, yeah, it hurt, but it didn't, and you could feel it, you know, like yeah, there was I mean, a medic on it. It's a broken yeah. rib. It's a bro- It was clean in half, but it, it was. It it was not it was flush like it didn't it wasn't oh, that's good then. okay sure uh, and the medic was like you should go get an X ray uh, Levine and Koppelman gave me the I want to make it clear I did stay the whole time but you did. they told me go if you need to go go and um, I stayed the whole time you it was, were there it was an eight ten hour shoot yeah because I was it there. was hugely expensive if, to rent it that was again incredibly ornate well, I don't first know what take is un- unbelievable and, and did uh, Deontay Wilder send you back out there because he was in your he corner was a, Deont- and Stipe Miocic was in uh, the yeah. corner of uh, of Soder he it was, was so much fun corner. working and meeting Deontay I, I love that guy I love that guy but he um he was like both of those guys were like no nah, you'd know it if it was broken no nah. No, you know, so they don't even know. Yeah. What the hell do they know? These, right. It's the like, I feel it. Right. Nothing. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it turned out. So the next day I went to, the next day I woke up and I could barely move. And I went to, uh, the adrenaline was gone, you know, yes, I went to get the x-ray. I was like, oh yeah, it's broken. Of course it's broken. You felt like a chunk. What do you think it was? <laughs> and I was like, well, Deontay Wilder, the champ told me that, that it wasn't. So I decided I should suck it up. And he was like, that was stupid. Wow. Paging Dr. Wilder. <laughs> Paging Dr. Uh, anyway, Kelly O'Coin here on the Rich Eisen Show. And I, I'm going to put you in a little bit of a spot. I hope okay. you don't mind because okay. you're kind enough to let me know you're in town. By the way, that's, that is that uh, is proof that you are not, you don't have an ounce of dollar bill in you because if you had an ounce of dollar bill, I would have seen you out and about and like, hey, you're supposed to tell me when you're in oh. town next. Instead, you're <laughs> like, oh, yep, I'm promoting nothing, but I'm in town. Let's go hang out. Like, good enough. Yeah, totally. So, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, last time we saw Bobby Axelrod, he went on a plane. And we haven't seen him since. He is in hiding. You know, he's evading the uh, the long arm of the law. Yeah. Um, You're looking at me intently. I'm looking at you intently. <laughs> he season two billion come, buyout. Season I mean, seven's I mean, coming I mean, soon. Um, what do you think? I mean, I, I, and I know the actor Damian Lewis had a lot going on in his personal life as his wife passed away and he's got kids and that's what he's focusing on. But man, I would love to see Bobby Axelrod back. I mean, he's so mm-hmm. good in the role and the, it's such an iconic character. But um, you know, I think. It, it, he had he was had a five year contract. Mm-hmm. Um, he he and his family live in the UK. Mm-hmm, right. I think it was just um, at a certain point it was just a lot, um, and he gave it at all. Uh, he's all, and I think that the uh, the outro that was written by Brian and David and created uh, uh, by them was um, was really satisfying. I know people miss. Him, but it's also it's been fascinating to watch Corey Stahl, who's a brilliant actor. Yes, um, inhabit Mike Prince, and the, like the cracks in his facade are becoming more interesting all the time. Well, and, I don't. Uh, I, I'm yeah. not saying his character. No, no, no. Is yeah, I was just sorry. Insufficient as a fan yeah. of the show. I'm just wondering, yeah. is there anything you can? A, I that you. They tell me can, nothing. Zero, huh? They tell me nothing. I know what happens based on literally the script I get. That often is two weeks before we start shooting, sometimes a week before we start shooting. How about that? Um, 
We're into shooting season seven. I've been going back uh, to the, a lot of red eyes in my life right now, which from is the, great. From Not, the Sterling I mean, Affair to Billions, yes. back and forth. That's so cool. Um, and it's and it's fun. And I I, I will say it's uh, it's very the first two episodes are very satisfying, really fun. Okay. So yeah. All right. Well, I, I I would not be disappointed. Let's just put it this sure. way: if if all of a sudden, Bobby Axelrod, because right. just like him saying, I I can't quit that life. Right. I, I I can't just, you know, run and hide. There's I a can't. there's a show. If you want a little fix, uh, uh, Damien, um, uh, Steve Kunkin, who plays Spiros, is also in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's something about a spy. I can't. I don't know the title of it, but it's about to come out. Okay. But, uh, uh, there's well, he's. He's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, stupendous. Yeah. I mean, obviously in Homeland and and, yeah. and Band of Brothers. So I mean, I uh, love the Damien. Uh, my two favorite things: my show Billions and the Portland Trailblazers. Both are led by Damien's. Damien I Lewis like and, it. and Damien Lillard. I like it. And that my favorite basketball player shares my nickname. I like it. It's, and by the way, you were great in the Americans too. What a oh, thanks, tremendous man. television show that was. Also. I was 100% sure I was going to screw that audition up because it was already my favorite show on TV. And thank God I didn't. What do you mean? First, so I auditioned late season two, yes. mid season two, came in late season two. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was obsessed with the show. And, you know, you put that pressure on yourself. It's like, oh, I have an audition for like a recurring character on my favorite show. It's yes. like, well, I can't F this up, you know. Right. Uh, and, and I didn't, thank God, because I have done that before. You have? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I've I've gone in wanting something so badly that I can't stop my hand from shaking or I'm not catching my breath. And, right. And they can smell fear in the room, man. They can smell need. <laughs> you know, no one no one wants to hire an actor who walks into the audition room needing the job. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows you need it, but you don't want to see it. Yeah. They can smell fear. Well, not that they want to. They're they're generally nice, but mm. so can so can Lillard. Yeah. But no, good thing you could just, you know, you could just shoot it from the logo, brother. Just yeah, like there your you guy. Go. <laughs> Just like your guy. Um, at Kelly O'Coin 77. Why 77? Oh, duh. That's the year the Blazers won. Like that's, that's the 77 in your yeah. in your. Session? I like to pretend it was the year I was born. Or when yes. when people ask, oh, were you born in 77? I just like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disabuse them of that thought. You, you want to ask him a question before he gets out of Dodge? Oh, I was Chris? just looking. Well, first off, is the, is the actor who plays Spiros as like, weird as his character Steve Kunkin yeah oh yeah total freak job <laughs> freak show no he's great he's a uh, everyone shares a, at least something most of the people share a little something um, I do think Damien is an alpha but he's the sweetest alpha you'll ever meet and a great ensemble player um, uh, uh, David Costable plays wags he's, he's got some wags in him he can be he's as flamboyant as that but he's also again not a sociopath uh, so <laughs> There's uh, a gray area. And he's, so whenever we get like a nice bottle of whiskey or something as a gift, he's always like, did you drink it? Did you drink? Because I'm like, no, it's too, I can't open that. I'm, yeah. It's too expensive. If I drink it, I won't have it anymore. And he's like, you drink it. You know, he's always, he's got the libertine. And Kunkin <laughs> is quirky in certain ways. He is a coffee fanatic. Okay. Um, but no. He's, he's there for comic relief, really. And he he's does such, such a, a brilliant, good job. Yeah. yeah. And he's such a brilliant actor. I love those those episodes when Bill and Spiros actually started working together a little bit. <laughs> when we so smashed the the uh, uh, the, the, the Porsche, yeah. um, he and I just, we, <laughs> we could barely catch our breaths. We were like 12 year old boys breaking stuff. <laughs> you know, it was it was a great, it was a lot of fun. And quick, you did one episode of The Sopranos. What was that like? Uh, well, we got Terrence Winter in, in that chair tomorrow. As a matter of fact, oh cool. I don't know if he wrote that episode, but I did. You know. uh, I did one episode where I was I get in the back of a car. Uh, the, 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 a handler and an informant are in the front. I'm an FBI agent. I get in the back of the car. It's pouring down rain, and I sit and I listen to them very angrily. And I grab a picture and say, "Was this man with him?" She says, "Yes." And I look even more pissed, and I get out, and I drive away. That was my Sopranos oh. career. Yeah. Is this man with him? <laughs> if at least you still get a residual check from it, right? I do. I get like a penny or two a penny uh, every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that too. I should frame that. Not from the Sopranos, but from my two episode, uh -huh. not arc, two different episodes of CSI Miami. Oh, seriously? Oh, I got to I gotta go back and look? Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't blink. Okay. <laughs> don't blink. Don't blink. I'll let you know when it's on. Nice. Uh, Kelly, thanks for letting me know you're in town, sir. Absolutely. Thank uh, you for having you. Great to see you. Anytime you're back out here and you got some time, I'd love to see you. Uh, check out, when is, the, do we know when the Sterling Affairs I hits? I don't. I'm going to. Uh, next, next year some point? Yeah, it'll be next okay. year. I have, uh, right. It's either be spring or, or fall probably. probably and then uh, coming soon, season seven of uh, of the great show Billions, man.
Very Thanks good. for coming on. Thank you. And then uh, good luck to your Blazers. As they yeah, go Blazers. There you go. That's Kelly O'Coin here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm my Axe Capital gear I'm proudly wearing <laughs> here on the program. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 